Jean. Hi. Hello. Hi. Good morning. Uh, good afternoon. Even now, isn't it? So, um, Janine is our business development lead for Broncom Finance here at Broncom. So, I'm going to hand over to Janine, and she's going to talk about how Broncom can offer bespoke solutions for each other in terms of Broncom Finance. Thanks, Janine. Thank you. Hi there, I'm just going to share my screen. Give me a second. There we go. Hopefully now you can see my presentation. It's coming through. Is that okay? Can someone just confirm they can see that? Okay. Um, so, oh, I've gone too far. So, uh, yeah, I'm Janine Prosser. I am the uh, business development lead for the finance software. Um, just to give you a bit of background about uh, my journey, I have worked with Broncom since June, but prior to that, I actually worked in a school using Broncom. And prior to that, was working in a school using um, a different piece of software. So I have been through the process that a lot of your schools will go through of um, using a piece of software going out to um, you know, look at different options, procuring that a new finance and MIS system, and then being through the transition process and using it within a school setting. Um, and then after about 15 months of using it, I've come over to Boncom and am now involved in all aspects of the finance side of things. With regard to the software, um, for schools that in particular are using um, Capita FMS, the software is designed to be very easy to access. So it's a cloud-based software. I'm sure you've seen lots of that already in the presentations from this morning. One of the key things that I found in the school using that was there was no need for the server or that central hosting system that we used to have to use to access and were forever getting kicked off. Um, it can be accessed for anywhere. And obviously that was really useful um, for myself when I was still working in a school during the first lockdown I was able to do the majority of my role from home the only thing I couldn't do was actually access the bank statement which had nothing to do um, with uh, Broncom I could do everything else uh, online um, and the fact that you can drill down through roles and permissions made that really useful because I was able as a um, the finance manager in the school to put on the relevant paperwork, um, so invoices, purchase orders, etc. And then have my budget holders approve those um, on the system. So we reduced that need for that signed piece of paper and that paper trail. Um, any paper documents that you have got as well, because it's cloud based, you can start getting rid of some of those as well, because you can start attaching um, documents directly to any of the transactions. So purchase orders, invoices, um, bank statements, journals. So you can really start to move towards that kind of ideal of paperless office. You can also have multiple pages up at once, which I found really useful, um, particularly working in a busy school office. Um, you will find that um, you often get interrupted. Um, and the fact that I didn't have to close everything down, go into a new piece of the um, site to find something. But also, and probably more importantly for those in support centres, if you are wanting to, in the middle of doing a bank statement or something along those lines, and you're wanting to then, you've got an inquiry about a particular invoice, the fact that you can have multiple pages open really helps that. Uh, as I said, for existing Capita FMS users, the terminology, and I'm going to show you the system very briefly in a second, is designed to be easy to use. The terminology is the same, the process follows the similar processes um, through the system and the way that you would put on um, payments, uh, purchase orders, approval processes. So it's designed that you would need, um, especially if you're moving over from Capita FMS and you've already got existing um, knowledge of how a finance system works, 
less than two days of training. And we, we split that down and break that into bite-sized chunks. And we also time it at appropriate intervals. So if you're looking, for example, you know, we set you up with how to finance, manage the system and do your invoices. But things like your monthly returns, your bank reconciliations, those that you tend to do on a monthly basis, we will time that accordingly to when you're due to do that. So you've not had the training sort of six weeks before you actually need to do that part of the system. Uh, there is a full onboarding process with the support from transition, as you will have been, um, Liz was just speaking about. So, um, and we are launching um, an accredited support uh, centre role for finance as well um, uh, early next month. You'll see as I demonstrate the system, it's intuitively built. So it is, um, it's very easy to navigate between the two. Just bear with me a second and I will um, just show you the system. So this is the BOMCOM Finance homepage. Uh, for those of you who are visual people, these colours will probably um, be quite nice and a welcome change to those who are used to using some um, of the other older fashion systems, should we say. Um, you will see in here, it's got all of the different aspects that you would require from a finance system. So you've got your accounts payable section where you're able to put all your supplier details in, process purchase orders, invoices, deliveries. There's some really nice touches within the system. So for example, um, delivery notes can be turned on and off per supplier. Payment processing, we support backs, check, card payments, um, and you can still import supplier catalogues and use all of the processing items that you would use um, in the system normally. Accounts receivable is, I think, an underused uh, part of FMS particularly, um, and obviously some of the other pieces of software out there. Um, it was something I was certainly warned off uh, when I was um, using that system that it was a bit sort of, oh, it's a bit complicated. Um, I used accounts receivable with, uh, within um, Romcom, very easy to use. You're able to raise your invoices. One of the nice things about it is because it's joined up to the MIS, if you are raising invoices to to um, a member of staff um, or a, a contact or a parent or a carer, it pulls through all of that information from the MIS. Um, you can also use it for your non-invoiced income. Um, so if you have got those odd pieces of cash, I know they're sort of moving away from cash these days and more, um, especially COVID's kind of helped with that. Um, but for any of those donations where they send around a lovely bucket at um, a trip or anything, uh, um, uh, event then you can use that for processing those budgeting so as it stands at the moment we support both fund allocation and cost center allocation um, and we actually have got the ability now to import a budget um, via um, we have two different uh, templates either csv or excel um, and you can import your cost center allocation now for that your staffing's a real hit with a lot of our schools because it has the ability, obviously, again, with it being joined up to the MIS, you can go from your salary projections directly to the um, staff contracts. Any changes that you make in terms of staff contracts automatically update your salary projections, which then feed through to your chart of accounts via commitments. You've also got the ability now to um, complete not only a pay reconciliation, but we have a lot of local authorities that are coming on board at the moment um, that actually use more in-depth reconciliation files in terms of um, journals and invoices for central payments. And that's all processed now through our um, automatic reconciliation. So we've got in here the um, chart of accounts, really easy to use, um, the details with regard to that, lots of nice filters and that all pulls through and you can see this part, different parts of the system. There is Patty Cash for those schools that still use it, although I know that's sort of been phased out along the way. We've got CFR returns, so you can complete your CFR returns within their bank reconciliation. Um, it all links to each other. There's a asset management system in there, so you can add equipment register. It will create those from um, invoices and you can select a minimum amount for that. So each term used to be my job in a school to go in and add anything I needed to the equipment register. All of your setups in one place and hopefully relatively easy and straightforward to see, You're not going searching for it. And down the bottom here, you've got all of the different reports that we are 
offer and are available, um, ranging from the, the standard ones, and hopefully a lot of these names will be familiar to those who already use the finance reports, but also the ability from our ad hoc reporting module to create your own reports as well. So that is just a brief overview of the um, system. And if we just go back into the presentation. Excuse me. Um, we can also just have a, you know, a quick discussion really about the sorts of collaboration we're currently doing with local authorities. So we have um, created bespoke reports for um, a lot of local authority schools. Um, so where I used to work in Cambridgeshire County um, Council's local authority, and we had um, specific formats that we need required reports to be produced that we would um, upload into a different piece of software. That was created. There's a section on the system called third party exports. It's simply a case of going in there, clicking the button, it puts it into your downloads. We have also worked, as I, I mentioned earlier, um, with Birmingham City Council and um, the education space which covers Newham and they, we have got reconciliation files um, for salary payments and as I said now journals and invoice and credit notes as well. Um, and we're currently working with um, Somerset and West Sussex on developing a two-way data feed between the local authority systems and the school sites and so that is currently in development. Um, one of the nice things, and you'll have seen this from the vision, is the fact that local authority access can um, be given so that actually a lot of the reporting items could be drawn out at a top level by the local authority. So the schools no longer need to necessarily pull so many reports that can be done um, at top level, which obviously saves everybody time and effort. In terms of support centre accreditation, so this will be launched next month. Um, it's going to comprise of self-serve videos and uh, manuals. So there will be, um, you know, able to access videos of the system and the training sessions. There will then be comprehensive tests, um, as Liz spoke about earlier. And what we will do, obviously, for um, finance customers is we will then offer um, a mop up session for questions. Obviously, quite a lot of um, different support centres and uh, local authorities may well have different questions in relation to their specific um, circumstances. And also to go through some of the recent cases. So some of the kind of key things that we get into our help desk and um, that are causing, you know, customers queries or questions or anything um, you know that, that's kind of a, a common knowledge so that we can work through some of those types of issues and help you um, in resolving those. So that's the main part of um, as I said of the the presentation. I'm happy to take questions or show in depth um, any more parts of the system if anybody would like in a little bit more detail um, and uh, answer any questions about that transition over having sat there and uh, on that side of the fence and experienced it myself. Thanks, Janine. Very, very useful. Um, something we, I think we've collectively demonstrated to a lot of authorities over the, the last six to eight months or so. I think there's been been a lot of interest. Okay. We're running slightly ahead of schedule. Um, so as we've got no questions, I think what I'll, I'll do is if we just quickly proceed to the, the final session, where there are just a few uh, sort of partner announcements from ourselves, as it were. I think it was uh, 2019, uh, our event at the Shard, which really kicked off a lot of closer engagement with local authority and the support community. And there's been a lot that's sort of changed operationally. I think we've been on the same journey as yourselves uh, in a number of instances. Um, transitioning from an MIS supplier who spent most of the time working directly with schools and multi-academy trusts 
to an ever-growing portfolio of SIMS support teams that now refer to themselves as MIS support teams and may, as we've heard today, support a, a portfolio of up to three or four MIS systems. So um, to reflect the importance of these partnerships, we'll be incorporating a few changes over the coming, coming weeks. So we do get a lot of leads and referrals from our partners uh, and LAs, but frequently schools do come directly to ourselves, not realizing that their current provider could be Bromcom accredited. And from our side, I suppose to our detriment, we haven't really followed that through. So from now, from sort of initial engagement, all of our sales teams will be speaking to any uh, new school that approaches Bromcom about where they get their support from. And if it's via an accredited partner, you know, we'll, we'll work together, uh, you know, hopefully to bring that to bring that school home, as it were. The second one is that there have been a number of schools that have previously moved to ourselves and their old support unit, shall we say, has now become accredited. So we'll be asking those partners to, should we say, identify these schools. Um, and then we can look at those schools, uh, if those schools are interested in taking support from yourselves, and we can look at returning those schools to you. Uh, it will be something we'll sort of engage with you in a transitioning process from first and second line support um, over, over a period of, of a couple of months, couple of months. Hopefully uh, your schools will be very, very keen to do that. Um, it's something where we're really focusing on, shall we say, individual schools or very, very small mats. What we're not really able to accommodate, though, is a, a school you may have supported and has joined a, a large mat, typically 10 to 15 schools above, that uses Bromcom across the trust. And from the, uh, the, fir the third side, we do have a lot of queries coming in about how we work with bids and tenders. Um, it's kind of a often a very sort of strict and rigid process that's uh, issued by the Multi Academy Trust, local authority, school or group of schools. And Bromcom's policy is to actually um, bid in accordance with the tender specification. Um, we would bid for all services unless we are instructed to do so and engage with a partner actually in the tender itself. Um, so if any of you hear of a, a sort of a tender coming up, please let us know and we can maybe ask a clarification question about where the uh, organization who's issued that tender wants to take their support from. Um, final point, we've spent a, a lot of time looking at Vision X today. Um, there was a, off, a free off charge offer on Vision X that expired in December that essentially ran to August 2023. And what we're doing today is that for all of our delegates, we'll extend that offer to yourselves if you just get in touch with either myself or Emma, um, and we can follow up on that for you. So I think it just remains for me to thank the presenters for their excellent contributions today and yourselves for spending your morning and early afternoon with us. And hope that very, very much next year, uh, we'll be bidding you a safe journey home from the 35th floor of the Shard at the Shangri-La Hotel, where I understand it's so far up that on a clear day, you can actually see the ground. Uh, thank you very much. Thanks everyone.